Dana Denha here, and this is Let's Watch with the Ann Arbor Film Festival. Every March, our annual film festival brings stories, visual arts, and unforgettable imagery to screens and gallery spaces throughout Ann Arbor. Artists travel from places far and wide to be part of this world-renowned celebration of film and art. Joining me is Laura Gibson, visual and lens-based artist and curator of the off-the-screen installation Dope Women in Media, honoring the women in film in Metro Detroit during the 2024 Ann Arbor Film Festival. Welcome to the show, Laura. Thank you, Dana, for having me. You know, I'd like to know a little bit about you. Why don't you tell me about, you know, your background, your schooling, what led you to being like, you do a lot of stuff, actually. You're a curator, you're a filmmaker, you're a photographer. What led you to that? Yeah, so um, I'm a native Detroiter, uh, born and raised, went to Cass Technical High School and then continued studies at Grand Valley State University, where I actually got my BA in art history and anthropology. And from there, coming back to the city of Detroit, you know, I was really home focused and home based and really wanted to focus my work um, from the city I was from. And recently, uh, my schooling uh, at Cranbrook Academy of Art, uh, where I attended from 2018 to 2020, uh, really opened my eyes in the field of photography, where I got my MFA. And from there, I really wanted to focus and highlight on the women in the city of Detroit um, and, of course, uplift them in the media arts. So I did a small gathering of women who were from the city of Detroit, um, who are media artists, filmmakers, photographers, visual artists. And we came together and we wanted to network and focus on uplifting each other in the same common space, um, critique each other's work, give you critical feedback. And I, from there, I was just like, I really want this to grow and I want this to form um, a really home base um, in either gallery spaces, um, working with other creative nonprofits. And so um, once the annual film festival, the Ann Arbor Film Festival, I was reaching back out to those who had previously ap applied to the, the festival, I really wanted to ask and inquire, well, are you interested in really focusing on women in the media arts and filmmakers in the city of Detroit? And from there, the rest is history, working with Leslie Raymond, um, the director at Ann Arbor Film Festival, and Thea Eck, we've been so adamant in making the show, you know, become what it is and bring it to life. And we're working with some amazing visual artists and filmmakers from the city, the Metro Detroit area, actually, and those who are emerging and those who are seasoned. But, and we really wanted to focus on their critical research right now and what they contributed to, you know, the whole film genre and, you know, what pop culture looks like and at it coming from the city of Detroit, those that, you know, many may know, but many people may not. And I want to shed, their, shed a light on their names. So that's what this exhibition really is for me to make awareness of the contributing women film makers and film artists in, in Detroit. Wow, what an interesting take. Cause you know, as someone that works in television, there aren't a lot of women, you know, you, you'll get like um, some temp employees very rarely that are women that are ready to do videography work. But I don't know if it's more so that they're not applying for the job or they're not putting themselves out there as much, or it's just like growing more as a women's uh, field for women. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, in all honesty, Many of the opportunities that I have received in my curatorial work specifically have been from women. And, you know, right now, I think this is a, a wonderful opportunity to, like I said previously, make aware those who are working right now and bring to light those who want to participate. Because ideally, I hope this exhibition leads to the greater scope of women coming together to network, to obtain resources, to obtain mentorship so they can feel confident enough to apply and produce and, you know, network and talk with other filmmakers, you know, in the industry. So from this exhibition, I hope it grows vastly. And we start here in the city of Detroit, bringing, of course, light to the city, but of course, you know, the marginalized communities, specifically women, women of color, black and brown women, you know, who we all communally work together to to make amazing creative ventures happen. But, you know, ideally, I'm trying my best to just make sure it grows. And it's, it's, it's a vast network of people. And hopefully this exhibition is the launching pad for that, because I, I would hope it does encourage, you know, women, whether they are just starting out or, you know, 
had to start in Detroit and they're around the world right now to come back to the city and lend a hand and, and reaching out to those who want to participate in the film industry. Yeah, it's it's really this conversation is making me think like I went to Wayne State, so I you know have a relationship myself with Detroit. My dad had his own business there, and when I was going for media arts and studies at Wayne State, there were far less women in the program. But then after we graduated, I felt like very few of the women that were in that program at the time that I was ended up working in the field. They pretty much got a bachelor's degree and then did something else. And I feel like at the time, a lot of those jobs were going to men. Yeah, yeah. And and like I said before, I have been lucky enough to have opportunity to be presented and, and cultivated for me by the many great women that I had known and do know uh, right now um, in the metro Detroit area. And um even though I want to create a network system for, you know, women, specifically women of color, you know, to participate in any ongoing projects, upcoming projects in film and in media, we do have to be aware that it has been much difficulty to uh, either acknowledge those who have done great work in the film and media studies, you know, um, but also become, I think I am the vessel that will allow many more opportunities to come. But as long as we all can participate together in making that happen, I think we can do a tremendous, you know, work right now, just starting, you know, with our phones and leading up to the big screen. Um, and it's great that you, you mentioned that, you know, um, right now we're working with Juanita Anderson. We're currently going to have a screen, screening of her film. And she currently works at Wayne State in the, the media arts department of her uh, well-known film, Who Killed Vincent Shen, where it will be screening at the Ann Arbor District Library uh, at the beginning of March. So her being a part is definitely lending a hand in assisting those who probably can tell the story that you're, you're, you're referring to about, you know, it being a male-dominated field and what it's like now, you know, previously what it was like and what it's like now as a woman to, to work in the industry. Yeah, and someone that went to Wayne State, the women that were in my program were women of color that didn't end up working in the field. I mean, you're right to advocate for these women because they have a hard, a hard, the hardest time breaking in. I feel like absolutely, but I think right now we're kind of in a in a stage where independent studios and independent filmmakers are are kind of becoming more mainstream and, and well known and. Even in production wise, I think it's a lot easier right now to create your own work, uh, whether whether it's like relying heavily on a well-known studio or videographer or this, that and the other. We, we are in a time right now where skills are easier to obtain to create work, especially like I said previously, our phone does a lot of the work now. So I think we, we are in a comfortable space where we feel I would say adequate enough to uh, call ourselves producers, and and even though we may not all have analog, you know, analog film experience, or if we do have digital experience and it's not enough, that's why I really want this show to have people of all ranges in their career participate because I want them to feel that they are acknowledged and that their their work is credible and their work is going to participate in something bigger than, you know, even my show, you know, I, I want this to grow and, and participate in larger scales. So they feel that they are accepted and they are, you know, purposeful in their work and it will tell a major story in, in their career. So I would hope that even though as women, we have not been aligned or, or given great acknowledgement in, in a lot of the things that we have done and specifically, you know, the visual art field or the film uh, creative field, this will be the opportunity to do that. Yeah, and I do appreciate you mentioning the phone situation because if you are starting out, first of all, a phone camera is amazing. And the, the images, the videos that you can take, photography, all of it is awesome. And you can hook a, a audio up to your phone now so you're not just recording the audio straight from your device you actually have a microphone but equipment's really expensive so if you're starting off you need to be able to use something that's not that expensive so you can make some money to get stuff that you might want to make your films and there's no shame in using your phone I swear I use my phone and I use a real camera depending on the situation I'm in because sometimes you're in a tight spot and you need to be able to go low go high go up go down you know you need to be able to do it all and if you're if you have a bigger camera with a tripod it's much harder to do 
True, true. <laughs> and even uh, right now, as, as you're you know, mentioning the accessibility of equipment, you know, I was gracious enough to um, get the, the Flourish Fund, which was able to assist in a lot of uh, funding for this exhibition. And so I, I did just want to mention, like, don't be afraid to apply for that grant, you know, ask for the resources, ask for the funding, you know, to assist you in any type of way. Maybe you need more phones, maybe you need another tablet, maybe, you know, not all things, you know, are necessary for the big budget type of equipment, you know, because most of us all started, like you said, with our phones and with small devices. Um, so I really would love to encourage people, you know, of all races and, you know, women and men even um, to just make sure that, you know, don't be afraid to ask for assistance. And that's where I really hope this exhibition can lead to that grander networking space where if someone is looking to have equipment, whether it's a projector or a phone or a DSLR, you know, I create this dope women in media network, you know, that we can all rely on each other to, to, to get that type of, of necessary assistance. The stuff you're doing is so amazing. I mean, you're so proactive too. I mean, that story about you going to the film festival and basically being like, this is, this is what I want. And then them being like, okay, it's a great idea. Like, I think that's such an amazing attitude to have as an artist because no one's selling you other than you. That you said it, that's really it. <laughs> <laughs> um, this it's, it's great because like I, I, even though I have a very kind of, you know, determined personality, I can't understand why it can, you know, be, you know, intimidating for most people to uh, approach others who they believe may be out of their, you know, field or, you know, expertise to ask. And sometimes we, we don't think it's just as simple as, you know, reaching out by email or sending a DM or inquiring about something. Now, there are some opportunities where, you know, you may have to press a little bit easier, but, you know, working with, like I said before, the many women who have given me opportunity, it, I think this, you know, inquiry just struck a chord, you know, with Ann Arbor Film Festival to say, hey, you know what, maybe we should, you know, create programming to highlight the women filmmakers in Metro Detroit. And not saying that there hasn't been something like this previously, but, you know, there's always opportunity to remake and redo and find other avenues to highlight and advocate for the women who are actually still here in Metro Detroit, who are working in Metro Detroit to just, you know, give them the platform to tell their story and tell their experience. Because we really, you know, only create more work when we know that there's somebody in our, you know, relative field or avenue, you know, of experiences. And that fuels us to make even more creative, you know, you know, projects and, and opportunities. So I, I it just kind of came over me to just say, hey, let's let's look work, let's work together to see what we can do for women filmmakers, you know, in Metro Detroit. And I think Ann Arbor Film Festival was the perfect place to ask that question. Well, Leslie's amazing. And I think she's very open-minded to ideas and everything. But really, when you think about it, and this is like something that I've thought about more recently, because it is easier to get a hold of people with Instagram. And like, you know, you can slide into someone's DMs and ask them a question. Maybe someone you never would have been able to find their email in the past, you know, where like, right. what's the worst that's going to happen? They don't respond. They say no. Then you move on, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yep. Um, talk about like how you got became like a curator of work and why this was something that you were passionate about. Well, I've been a visual artist as long as I can remember. My mother uh, was a visual artist, is still a visual artist and illustrator and creative. And, you know, being under her and getting other mentorship um, from people and organizations in the city of Detroit, uh, that being the car center. Um, attending courses with them um, through the Arts League of Michigan, um, this massive arts network called the Fine Art, Detroit Fine Arts Breakfast Club. Um, you know, all these networks and avenues have, you know, kind of lended me and it kind of pushed my passion forward. Um, how I see my visual our practice, you know, expand is actually more into a, a social practice work. And so that's where I see my curatorial work expand because I'm so community oriented and I love to give opportunity to those who are who I know who are expertise or amazing at what they do and if I hear opportunity present itself you know I'm on the phone or I'm texting or I'm emailing saying hey we need to make this happen with you participating I know the places I know the people let's make this event happen um, one of the major events started at the car center 
um, where I curated a massive show of Black identity redefining the Black body. And from there, you know, my curatorial practice has expanded and I've created an exhibition, I would say consecutively each year, I think uh, minus 2020. Um, but each year I have, you know, just generated these ideas mostly from experience because that's where I'm pulling from um, to create shows where, you know, participating artists, mainly from the Detroit area, you know, I, I, I work with them to uh, create the show that I think will be at a specific place, specific time. You know, I kind of am just like the liaison go-to. Now, even though like I am a visual artist and I have work that, you know, um, I created previous to my time at Cranbrook and during and somewhat after, you know, creating work with other people, I think just makes more noise. It makes more, you know, impact. And that's kind of where my curatorial practice wants to stand in is that if I can make impact in a large scale, you know, not just creating my own work that can participate in shows, but I make that show and I generate this, you know, audience to come to look at these individual works and create a, a, a understanding and create a theme around that. But I think that's, you know, talking to the current times right now, you know, that kind of fuels my creative practice. So a lot of my, you know, art projects stem from that. And a lot of my art projects are social work and communal work. And that kind of then drives my visual art practice where I can either create more, you know, photography work, some lens-based work or drawing and painting work, which was like my first love. Well, I'd like you to talk a little bit about your relationship with the city and how that really fuels your personal work, right? I just, I'm a Detroit girl. I love, <laughs> I love Detroit. <laughs> um, I think there's, I mean, there's just so many people I, in, in my network who have the same love and passion for our city. I think because it's our resilience, you know, that we want our city to thrive and we want our city to, I think, be understood, you know, mostly because the mass general public has a perception of what Detroit is. And if you're from this city, if you know this city, you know, you want to speak truth about it. You want to speak facts about it. You want to speak the love that we all share in the creative space for it. And, you know, right now, I feel like we're all participating in this kind of I don't want to say revitalization because that, that's a word that's been used a lot, but like a rejuvenation of like our craft. And, you know, right now there's so much opportunity, I think, being shown um, and for all of us to participate in that I think that starts with us um, and then that reaches the city, the city in a large scale. And so, I mean... I think there's just something about being an underdog that makes us hustle harder, that makes us work harder, that makes us, you know, want to go to any state, any country and say, you know, I'm from this, I'm from Detroit and I'm proud to say it, you know, despite what, you know, the general mass public can say, you know, I am a representative of my city. And I think the work that I'm doing is making it proud. And, and I also show pride in the people who, work here and who stayed here and who want to do more work here, you know, and not to say that, you know, we don't pull from other places that we, we travel from or travel to or, or with people out of the state, but there's no place like home and home is where, you know, my work started. And I think it's going to be where my work finishes. Yeah. Upon doing research for this interview, I was looking at your stuff and, and a lot of stuff you talk about is your family and like your family being from Detroit and sort of keeping the history of the city alive through buildings and places and things that used to exist. And from what I'm understanding, from what I'm reading about what you're doing is that like a lot of that history is gone and no one's really keeping much track of it. Yes, my, my work uh, starting at Cranbrook Academy of Art, where I did focus on displacement, um, did begin that research. It began with my own family. Um, I am a part of the generation that came after those who came from the Great Migration from the South uh, up North. And my family migrated in a small town area called Del Rey. And from there, they soon moved over to Detroit. And just after talking with family members and going to my old homestead, uh, which was on the northwest side of Detroit, that no longer is there. It's a vacant lot, you know, on, in the middle of the street. 
you know, I was hearing the same recurring story of, yeah, those homes are gone. Um, my father's home is gone in the city of Detroit. Um, uh, and even other associates and people I knew, they were saying their other homesteads were gone. And, you know, I thought of this as like a crisis, like this is something that shouldn't be a part of our narrative as a, as a, as a, like as an individual and like as a family, mm -hmm. you know, so even though I, I, it's like a drop in a bucket of like my beginning research, you know, I wanted to see like, where can I find this information or documentation? And there really wasn't a place where that existed. Um, so if you do see some of my video work or audio work, um, it is relying on the people who remember these places. And that's really the, our only archive through oral storytelling mostly. If you have, if I have the opportunity, if anyone has the opportunity to go find these places and, and, and photograph them and, you know, write about them, like that's kind of a privilege because, you know, the only place to really exist now is in your mind. So I have to take that opportunity and take that, you know, necessary step to record and to, um, you know, jot down and, of course, still being a creative, I really want to experiment new ways of interviewing because talking about losing a home is sensitive. It's, you know, not easy to bring up. So uh, one of the videos that I created was hand conversations where I talk with my mother about her remembering home, not just the home that I grew up in, but, you know, her home that she no longer as we as a family actually no longer have access to that she grew up in on the north end and then of course um her father's home that's no longer here when he moved here from the south um in the northwest side of detroit so i really wanted to experience experiment new ways of interviewing so the intimacy of touch was how i documented that conversation and i think ways of of touch and ways of you know letting the other person know that they are being supported and held kind of opens up a conversation. So I really love that video and I hope that I can experiment new ways of, of interviewing. But you'll see also in some of the artists work in this show that it's really based in on people and like their experience, experiences and spaces and memory and loss and you know what their you know personal upbringings look like and how it reflects in video and film because I just feel like photo and video is so important in, in storytelling and telling a person's true narrative. So that's why I'm just such an advocate on uh, media studies and new ways of experimenting with film and video. And I think these artists did an incredible job of doing that. Well, you know, when you talk about women and media, you know, I feel like women feel stuff differently and they think about stuff differently than men do. And so when they're telling stories art sto through their art, it's going to be completely different and maybe even in some ways more empathetic of this, the person in the story or the thing in the story, because women have more feelings about a lot of things, I think, that they internalize a lot and that that can be seen in their artwork. Absolutely. Um I, I, I hope that there, there is a transition of how men are directing and, and, and um, you know, putting the lens on a community or themselves or the opposite sex. But I would have to agree that, you know, women, we do have a more in tune understanding of like understanding our feelings and it reflecting into our art. Um, however, I think being an artist, you know, whether you're a man or a woman, you kind of have to do deep diving. Sure, um, yeah. <laughs> so um, I've had the privilege to see so many uh, people in my network of creative people in the city of Detroit, um, both men and women, really be vulnerable. And um, with women specifically, I, I, I've seen, you know, specifically in this uh, showcasing of art, you know, we're talking about our families, you know, we're talking about our bodies, we're talking about, you know, standards of beauty, we're talking about how we exist in spaces. And, you know, I, I have to give, you know, them a round of applause for being that vulnerable and being, you know, so I, what's the word I'm thinking of, just just being understanding of like who they are and and focusing that in their art because it can be scary, it can be risk taking. Um, but as women, um, I think we have contributed so much to that in our work and others' work. You know that probably is not being talked about enough. Um, so specifically with you know Juanita Anderson's 
um, executive producing, you know, who killed Vincent Shin, you know, she saw this story, she saw this, you know, terrible act happen. And this was her way of, of lending herself to this opportunity, to this tragic uh, happenstance. And so I feel like us as women, you know, we try to take we take the, the the scene of what it looks like and we're like, we're not going to have that. We have to tell the story. We have to make sure that this is being talked about. Um, it's, it's something that I feel like it triggers us. It triggers our, you know, nature of um, just nurturing and taking care of. And so as creatives, you know, we find that way through, through making. And also I think through gathering, you know, gathering other individuals who share our, our light and our, our story and our ways of making. So I really am a advocate of being, uh, you know, vulnerable in your work. And these women have done that. And, you know, I hope that continuously throughout the show, people can see that and they find some type of relatability and even more empathy, you know, to to just continue following them and what they're doing and 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 more work to be created if you are an artist. So absolutely. Do you, can you tell us when and where this installation will be and maybe tease a couple artists if you could? Absolutely. So the Dope Women in Media uh, honoring uh, women filmmakers in Metro Detroit will be taking place at the Ann Arbor Art Center, um, which is located at 117 West Liberty. And it will be happening from March 11th to April 6th of this year. Um, we have some amazing participating artists where you can see multimedia work, some of them including uh, Brie Gant, Dream Hampton. And we will have a screening of Juanita Anderson's uh, executive produced film, uh, Who Killed Vincent Shin? And that will take place March 8th at the Ann Arbor District Library from five to seven. So we have many incredible artists who are participating in the show who are from the Metro Detroit area. And it's gonna be just a fun time to come and see work, you know, large scale, small scale installation, um, you know, video, film, some photo, and it will be a great time to speak with some of these artists. We have other additional programming. We're working with uh, the Detroit Narrative Agency, another nonprofit, creative nonprofit in the city of Detroit who works with uh, BIPOC emerging filmmakers who also will be participating in a capacity uh, during this exhibition. So I really am appreciative of all the support that I have received from the city of Ann Arbor, additionally from the Ann Arbor Film Festival and the Ann Arbor Art Center that have made this exhibition happen. Additionally, uh, the Flourish Fund, which you know has granted uh, funding to uh, support this exhibition and programming. Um, so I really hope that everyone can make time to, to attend and see. We have a lot of great things that are happening and I hope that you all can participate with us. Well, I can't wait to go. And that's awesome that there's such a long opportunity to go visit it at the Ann Arbor Art Center. So there's no excuse not to go see it. I think it'll be super exciting. And it's always nice to go downtown and then you can just kind of peruse around after you go visit it. Uh, before we go, why don't you just tell people why they should support like the Ann Arbor Film Festival as an artist, as a viewer, and it's just someone that loves art. You know, you don't really think of Michigan too much when you think of like critical filmmaking, but the Ann Arbor Film Festival, you know, I think is helping put us on the map in that space. And I'm just, you know, privileged to participate with them in this year's film festival to shine a light on why people should be looking at, you know, the east, southern, southeast state of Michigan and how and we how and ways that we are contributing to the film industry. So attending the film festival is definitely, I think, the great step to to do something to do excuse me to do things like that in that nature. So come come to see you know the many things that are happening with us you know at the film festival this year, especially making sure that you guys stop by the Ann Arbor you know Art Center to see the show. All right. Well, thank you, Laura, for being on the show. Absolutely. Thank you so much for talking with me. I had a great time. To watch this and other CTN series, visit youtube.com slash CTN Ann Arbor. And remember to like, subscribe, and share. I'm Dana Denhoff for Let's Watch with the Ann Arbor Film Festival.